has fulfilled the law and the prophecies by dying on the cross. So when he said it was finished, it was finished because he had fulfilled the law and the prophets according to the scripture. Thank God for that. Jesus Christ death on the cross paid our penalty for our sin when we have been born into the world the bible says sin is on us because it passed down from adam therefore the bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god so when jesus christ died on the cross when he said it was finished, he had paid the penalty for sin. God had poured out his wrath upon his beloved son for you and for me. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 21 puts it this way. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Wow! Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for your sin. And I'm telling you, no one else could take the wrath of God pouring on Him, such as Jesus Christ. So if you have not received Christ into your heart, the Bible tells us that the wrath of of God abideth on you. But he has given us this free gift of his son that if we simply receive his son, we will have eternal life. So we see when Jesus said it was finished, it fulfilled the law and the prophets. It paid the penalty for sin. But most of all, it pleased the Father. The Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I'm telling you, there's no greater words than you want to hear when your Father is pleased with you. You know, I want to hear Jesus say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Will he say that to you? That is the question. Did it please the Father? So when Jesus Christ was on that cross and he lowered his head, I want you to know, he said, it is finished. Now, that means Jesus Christ wasn't finished because we see his death on the cross was simply the beginning. He finished the mission that he had. But he won't. He was not done. Praise be to God. He wasn't done. The next thing I want to talk about there is when Jesus said it was finished. After that was the resurrection. It demonstrated that he had power over death, hell, and the grave. As we said before, many religions have their leaders still in a tomb buried somewhere. Christianity is the only one where our Savior has risen. And He is risen from the grave. I like to um, read this, um, John chapter 20, verse 8. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. It says, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre, then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that 
was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Now look at verse 8. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. Goodness gracious alive. I'm telling you that that stone on the tomb was rolled away so that we can look in and see what Jesus is saying to us. Well, even before Jesus Christ died, he told, the, he told us this in John chapter 11, verse 25. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 11, verse 25. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Praise be to God. Even though we were dead, if we believe in Jesus Christ, we shall live. How do we know this? Because he rose from the grave. That's how we know we shall live again. Jesus Christ demonstrated the power over death, over the grave, and over hell by his resurrection. The power of the resurrection. Now I want to get back to this story we just read in John chapter 20. I want you to think, look at the sign that Jesus Christ left us. And don't miss it. I've read this many of years, and I glanced over it, and I missed it. But I'm telling you, when you get into God's Word and you study, He shows you some things that you've never seen before. This is why I love reading God's Word every day, because it is a living Bible. It's a living book. And I'm telling you, you find new things every time you read it. But I want to look at John chapter 20, verse 7. And I don't want, and actually 6 and 7. Don't miss it here. I'll try to repeat this again. John chapter 20, verse 6 to 7. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeing the linen clothes lie. Now these were the clothes that they wrapped Jesus Christ in in the custom of that day. They wrapped them in linen clothes and spices. And look at verse 7. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Woo, man. This is important because if you understand the customs of that day, when the master was eating and he was done, he would wad up the napkin and throw it on the plate or the table. But if the napkin was folded, that was a sign to the servant that I'm not done yet. Woo! Don't you miss that? Because we see that the linen clothes would all wad it together and set to the side. But the napkin that was about his face was set to the side. And as the Bible say, it was wrapped together in a place by itself. If you would, it was folded. So that lets us know, his servants. So when that um, disciple looked in... Look at what verse 8 says. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. I believe that he first saw that Jesus Christ wasn't there, that his body had rose from the grave. And then he saw the napkin that was folded to the side, letting them know that I'll be back. Woo! I don't know about you, but I'm excited that the message that God says is I'll be back. I'm not done yet. Study that napkin out and those, those customs. You'll find out that that sign that Jesus left when that tomb was open and we looked in and we found that Jesus' body wasn't there and that he leaves this little napkin folded. 
to let us know that I'm coming back. Jesus Christ wasn't done. I like what he said in John chapter 4, 14, verse 3. John chapter 14, verse 3. Let's see what he says here. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. So I want you to understand when Jesus said, it is finished, he didn't say he was done. He says, I'm now going to prepare a place for you. Jesus Christ is not done, he is working it out for you. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you. See, he is it is finished, but he is not done. I think want to thank you, thank God for that that he is working it out for us. And in that day will he will come back and call us up and we'll go with him. Now, we see that Jesus leaves this sign of this napkin that hey, I'm not done yet. I'm coming back. What did Jesus tell his disciples to be doing? I want you to be clear here. We're getting to the end here and we're getting to the most important part right now. We talked about Jesus saying it was finished. He had fulfilled the law. He had paid the penalty for sin. He has rose from the grave. He left us a sign that he's coming back. But in the meantime, what did he tell us to do? I think we have all know this, the Great Commission... Unfortunately, it has become the great commission. That means we're not doing it. If we look at Matthew chapter 28, and I want to slow down here because this is it right here. Because if you don't get anything, get this. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, listen to what he said here, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Wow. Jesus Christ had just rose from the grave. He has showed that all power was given unto him. And what does he do? He tells his disciples to go and proclaim it to the world. You ask yourself this question. Are you a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ? Have you been proclaiming the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? What have you been doing? You've been saved all these years, and you haven't told anyone about Christ. You know what? During this pandemic time, It is so interesting to see what people are doing with their time. I have seen so much stuff being produced and nothing dealing with Christ. Everybody is practicing social distancing, but they're distancing themselves from Christ. He has given this time to us to prepare. As I told you before, this is just the beginning, and you need to be prepared. What are you doing with your time? Are you still letting Satan steal your time from you when you're supposed to be studying and coming closer to God to prepare? Jesus Christ, after the resurrection, gives this commission to the saint to his disciples. I'm going to give you four more scriptures and I pray that you write them down. 
Because we're going to concentrate on what's the main thing. Unfortunately, today, churches have took the main thing and made it the minor thing. We must be about the Father's business. Now, let's, let's, take, a look. let's take them one by one. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And I want to talk about this one. And he saith unto them... Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Wow. What is Jesus saying there? He is saying, if you are following me, you are going to be fishing for men. Most of his disciples were fishers. They knew how to fish. They would get something and pull it out and it would die. That was the fish. It was living, they would hook them, and then they cook them. <laughs> but now he says, I'm going to change that around. You're going to get those that were dead and they now they're going to live. I ask you the question, which one's more important? And then he tells us, he says, I will make you fishers of men. There's no doubt that if you are following Christ, that you will fish for men. And then you have to ask yourself the question, if you're not, what does that mean? I think you know the answer. If you look at Luke chapter 5, verse 32, let's get there. Luke chapter 5, verse 32. Boy, listen to what Jesus said here. He says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Wow. His main purpose was to seek and to save that which was lost. And he's telling us here that he has came for sinners to repentance. So many church activities are built upon fellowshipping with each other. Fellowship is good. Don't get me wrong. Jesus fellowship. But as he says here in five, Luke chapter 5, 32, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What is the main thing? If our activities outweigh reaching the lost for Christ, we are not doing the Father's will. This is the commission that Jesus gave right after the resurrection. John chapter 20, verse 21. I've got to hurry up here. I want to get you out here in time. John chapter 20, verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again. Again, I love that again. I already told you, but I'm telling you again. Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. Wow, where did he send them? He sent them into the world to be a witness. How do I know that? Well, look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Here's what Jesus said as he's about to ascend into heaven. And he's leaving the disciples for the last time. Listen to what he says. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus Christ wants us to be a witness. Now, sad to say, many people are not witnessing for Christ because something hasn't taken place inside of them. You're going to witness to what you have been a part of. So many a time we're walking around thinking that we have received Christ and we have not. Because it is clear that if you have received Christ, if you believe in the resurrection power of Christ, and you are walking among men that are dead, you should be fishing for them. And if you're not, don't fool yourself. Because the chain 
has not taken place. Because Jesus said this. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do you love them? If you love him, you're going to keep his commandment. If you love the resurrection, you'll keep his commandment. What has the world done with the resurrection? Well, you probably know it. A few a week ago, they called it um, Easter and they celebrated with Easter bunny, Easter eggs. If you do your study, you'll understand that all that stuff is worshiping a pagan God, pagan God the God of fertility. But they have, and churches are hoodwinked, going around having Easter egg hunts with kids and teaching these kids all this stuff. And then you say, oh, oh, it's harmless, it's fun. But what are you teaching them about Christ? You're teaching them about the world. And the same thing goes for Christmas. We must teach the people what Christ told us to do. As he said in the Great Commission, go ye therefore and teach all nations. It is clear. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. I want to challenge those that are listening today to look at the fruits you are producing. If they are, if you're producing the fruits of the world or the works of the flesh, you are not saved. God wants you to understand the power that He has over resurrection. The power that He has over death. And what He wants you to do is receive Him into your heart. God has always given us a warning. He's always given us time to get it right. It is no accident that you're listening to this message today. You know where you stand with Christ. And He wants you to get it right. And it's really easy to get it right. You just simply have to come and say, Father, I'm sorry for my sins. And I believe that Jesus Christ died and was buried and on the third day rose from the grave. I accept Him now into my heart. And then you'll find out if you've done that because that change in your heart will take place and you will have a desire to do the things of Christ. You know, the scripture says, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby if you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, you're going to have a desire to do the things of Christ. So I'm so glad today that when we looked into the tomb, one, he was not there. Number two, he paid the penalty for our sins. And then he pleased the Father and he showed us that he was coming back. God is not through with us yet. I'll I'll end with this scripture here, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm going to read 6 to 9. These are so powerful. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 to 9. It says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Boy, is he shining or what? But we have this earthen, we have this treasure in earthen vessel. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not in us. What is he saying there? Is that God has given us the power, but it's in this earthen vessel that is weak. And we know that we can't do anything. God has gave up on the flesh. But he says that the excellency of the power may be of God and not in us. And listen to these last two. It says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, oh, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. God is not through with us yet. And I want you to see here that all these things that he mentioned and delivered us through, we had to go through. It says we were troubled. We were perplexed. 
We were persecuted. We were cast down. Christians, we're going to go through some stuff. But I'm encouraging you today to hang in there. He's going with you. He'll go with you all the way. So when the devil is trying your nerves and knocking at your door, you let him know that God is not through with you yet. Because he said, I'll be back and I'll receive you unto myself. So if you are still listening, God is talking to you today and he's saying that you need to look at what you're doing with your time. What are you doing with Jesus Christ? That is the answer. What have you done with Christ? So if you have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I pray that you bow your heads and believe this in your heart, and Christ will come in and save your soul. Say, Father God, I come now confessing I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day he rose from the grave. Come into my heart and save me now. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you've done that, please drop me a line. I would love to send you some information about growing. We thank you for tuning in today. Remember, all of our sermons can be found on minutesoftruth.org. Please take a look, and we'll hope to see you next time. God bless.